In my last video, I talked about how I was approaching AI development for cargo defense, but this is a new area for me, and in the last week I've completely started over on it. I finally got it working pretty well, so in this episode I'll talk a little bit about how it works, and also the first difficulties I've run into with Godot. The AI isn't finished by any means, but it's now at a point where it can beat me if I'm not careful. I found doors to be the most valuable tactical asset currently, as you can open and close them without using an action, until they get hacked by an enemy but that might change in the future for balance. My original approach assigned roles to each enemy unit at the beginning of the turn. This doesn't take advantage of new information during the turn, such as revealing more of the map or one of your units being eliminated. Now the AI starts its decision making from scratch for each action. There's still a quota for what percentage of the actions can be spent on combat, but for now I've set this to 100%. If that quota hasn't been met yet, the AI starts by evaluating available combat actions. One of the big challenges is deciding whether it's better to attack from where the units are now, or move for better opportunities. To start, a list of possible attacks and defensive actions is generated for everything in its current position, and each potential action is assigned a score. The list of attacks for each unit is generated by determining the range of angles that would hit each enemy and friendly unit, and then aligning the angle range of the weapon to each side of each of those ranges. Each of these possibilities is then scored according to the probability of hitting each enemy or friendly, the damage it would do as a percentage of hit points, and then an estimated value of the unit. For friendly units, of course, this affects the score negatively. There are many points in the scoring where values can be tweaked to give the AI different behavior. For each of the AI's units, the top scored actions are selected, up to the number of available actions. Then the whole scenario is scored as a sum of the best actions that can be taken and a negative value for how much danger each unit is in from enemy units that can attack it. Once this initial scenario is scored, a list of possible moves is generated. For each of those moves, the entire process is repeated. New lists of actions are generated and assigned scores, now with one less action available, and then the whole post-move hypothetical scenario is scored. Once all of those scenarios are scored, the one with the highest score is chosen. If it's the original scenario, the AI takes the highest scored action that was generated with it, otherwise it uses an action to move. Once I had this working pretty well, I needed to make the AI move on to non-combat actions when no enemies are in sight. Exploring was next on my list. That's a fairly straightforward process. The AI keeps track of each tile it hasn't seen yet, and updates an A-star graph when it does see them. To explore, it picks a distant unseen node, and picks the nearest available unit to move toward it. That destination is remembered, both to prioritize continuing toward that node, and to avoid sending other units to the same place. There's a little bit of a cheat here. While the initial picking of a target is based on pathing from what the AI has seen, individual moves are based on the complete game board. This prevents a move stopping halfway because a unit hits an unseen obstacle. I might change this later, but for now this seems fair because the player gets the same benefit. The green highlights for where you can move exclude spaces occupied by an enemy, even if you can't see it. Another nuance here is doors. The AI always assumes doors are open until it tries to move a unit through one. Then it stops short if the door is closed, and will spend an action to hack it if the door blocks the beginning of a movement. Once I had exploration working, I hit a bit of an odd problem. The AI would often get stuck in a loop. With no enemies in sight, the AI would move to explore, then immediately retreat because the danger evaluation in the new location outweighed the potential attacks. But then, after retreating, there were no enemies in sight, so it would repeat this process. Worse, each unit would end up doing the same thing. I tried many solutions to this. For one thing, I now avoid exploring into areas with known danger until all other exploration options are exhausted. But it's still no good to have the AI hide from you indefinitely, even if it's in their best interest for survival. That's why I introduced what I'm calling a cowardice factor, for lack of a better name. It's really not a good name, but whatever, it'll do for now. For every action that the AI retreats, or has to move into danger because there's nowhere left to explore, this factor increases. Now all danger evaluations are divided by this cowardice factor, essentially forcing the AI to become, well, less cowardly, actually. The factor is then reduced for every attack action. I'm sure there's plenty of room to tweak and improve this concept, but the goal isn't to create a perfect, unbeatable opponent. It's to create an opponent that you have to think to outsmart, and right now it's doing that job pretty well. Now I'd like to talk about a few difficulties I've hit with Godot. First, as a caution to anyone with prior trigonometry experience, ATAN2 doesn't behave like you might expect. The X and Y are swapped. Apparently this was designed to mimic a clock, so that an angle of zero points in positive Y instead of positive X. At least that's easy to work around. Secondly, I found that when sorting an array with a custom function, if that function doesn't exist, it just silently doesn't sort the array. No warnings or errors. 
just something to watch out for. I moved some code into a nested class and forgot it wouldn't access functions from the outside class, so my sort did nothing. Lastly, those light 2D nodes I attached to the player crew became a bit of a problem for selecting things in the editor. The rectangle for the light covered everything else, so that would get selected almost anywhere I click. Luckily I got an idea from someone in the Godot Discord chat to just make the lights invisible initially and set them to visible at runtime. Invisible objects don't get selected when you click. I've also stopped using the light mask to hide enemies, because it caused the sprite to get cut off where it overlaps a light occluder. Instead, I update their visibility based on line of sight tests every time a unit enters a different tile. I've also added a debug mode that keeps the enemy visible at all times, so I can watch what the AI is doing. And in this mode, the layer for highlighting what spaces you can move to and what enemies you can attack is repurposed to show which nodes have been seen by the enemy AI. So that's pretty much where I've left off for this week. Next I plan to make dodging work and make the AI actually steal your cargo. As always, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more of my game development journey, please consider subscribing.